Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video with Australian and international executives. Today, I have with me Scott Monty, CEO and founder of Scott Monty Strategies. Welcome to the program. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. Now, Scott was one of the keynote speakers at uh, on day two of CBIT Australia 2016, and I thought I'd, before we get on to that, I thought I'd just ask you if you could please share a little bit of your business history and uh, and tell us about Scott Monty Strategies. Sure. So uh, I'm probably most notorious for having served six years at Ford Motor Company mm -hmm. as a global head of digital and social media. Right. Uh, it was during the global car apocalypse, I guess you could call it, the global automotive meltdown. A lot of lessons learned there, and it was really, it was, it was from 2008 to 2014, so it was really at the height of when we saw digital really come into it. So yeah, I mean, this is really fresh. Uh Inside. Yeah, yeah. So prior to that, I had about a decade and a half experience both in the agency and brand side, mm -hmm. uh, working with some you know world class brands like Coca Cola, American Airlines, Panasonic. Uh, and what I've done since leaving Ford is take that expertise in house and start my own consultancy to help brands and agencies just get smarter about how they deal with real human beings on the other side of this screen. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. So the title of your presentation today was Fulfilling the Promise of Digital, How Humanizing Your Business Drives Attention and Trust. Now, uh, for those who weren't at the keynote, and it'll take about a week, I think, for CBIT to put that online, and I'll have a link to that keynote when it's available, but can you please share the key themes of your talk and, and what you'd like the audience to take away and really remember and, and implement? So, you know, we live in an age where technology is changing almost by the minute. Mm. You know, there Not are, a second. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there are new platforms, there are new devices, uh, there are you know, in numerous ways of reaching out and touching people. Um, and yet, we forget about the face-to-face, -face, the human side of things, and we just get so fixated on the technology that we don't stop to ask ourselves, why are we doing this? Mm -hmm. you know, are we doing it simply because it's possible, or are we doing it because we should, mm -hmm. right? because it affects business results in some way? And, and how do you do that? Right? You do that by creating relationships with people. You know, not just blasting messages at them on yet another platform, mm. but actually taking the time to listen to their concerns, to respond to them, to give them something that's compelling, right? not just hitting them with a bunch of advertising. Sure. Right? It's, it's our opportunity to take back this world and to make digital work for us rather than make us work for digital. Absolutely, yeah. So were there, were there other key points in the seminar and, and and also do you have I know I know that it will be available as a, as a stream later on but does your website have a, like a, a blog that, that discusses some of these themes or do you have a book that you've written well, I, uh, I talk about this stuff uh, all the time I mean, you have a you have a podcast or a video blog. I, I, I do a, a Sunday evening well it'll be a Monday morning uh, video here mm -hmm. uh, in Australia uh, live Facebook video yeah uh, where I, I, uh, I have a weekly newsletter Mm -hmm. And I pick a couple of issues out of the newsletter and preview them in video form. And, and I try to get the audience going. Right? Sure. I, I get some interaction going on and just explore a couple of things in depth with them. Um, and, and on my site, that's where I kind of you know, talk about all these issues on a regular basis. Um, now, I have links to those, but is it what, what's your web address for your website? ScottMonty.com. And your Facebook page, facebook.com slash ScottMonty? You got it. Excellent. Nice. How about that branding? Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Works. Yep. yep. Works. But, but I maintain, uh, you know, to be authentic, and a lot of brands talk about authenticity. Oh yeah, we hear that a lot, yeah. We have to, you gotta be authentic, mm. right? It's, it's they like, say that so insincerely, don't they? <laughs> well, that's the thing, I think it was uh, George Burns, you know, years and years ago, yeah. he said, you know, the key to success is sincerity. Yeah. Once you can fake that, you've got it made. <laughs> that's right, I remember. <laughs> Read, <laughs> Wait, so, I've probably seen it on lunch, yeah. But, but I, uh, I talk about the acronym ARC, mm -hmm. A-R-C. You know, in order to do this well, you have to be authentic, mm -hmm. you have to be responsive, and you have to be compelling or create compelling content, right? And that's that goes a step or two beyond just creating advertising, right, yeah. or marketing on another platform. Sure. So, how do you help companies to realize that? You know, how do they go deeper, taking it several layers deeper than these blasted messages that you're you're, you're talking about yeah. to transform their businesses and and their to make smarter business decisions with all this aggregate feedback, and you know, so they can form you know truly actionable business intelligence that helps people. I mean, it's, yeah. as you said, it's all about the people. If you're not delivering value to people, 
Well, I mean, bring on the robot revolution because that's who, you know, and then just get rid of people altogether. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's hope not. Let's hope no. we never get to that. Absolutely, but, yeah. But, you know, part of this, uh, it does touch on the, the automated aspect of things uh, with regard to big data, mm-hmm. right? We hear a lot about big data. Big data is like the weather, right? So everyone's talking about it, but no one's doing anything about that's it. That's it. Right? Right. Yeah. I'm more concerned with small insights. You know, that's where the real nuggets of truth are. And if we take some of these big data and bring them together, put some analysis behind them, right? Then you can drive two, three, four levels deeper and bring it back to you know your product development team, uh, your, your management team, uh, maybe even your risk management team mm. uh, to determine how you change how you do business, maybe how you manufacture a product, how you bring it to market, whatever it is. You can start to change your business practices based on really good listening. Right, so it's more than just someone complaining in a tweet yeah. and you mollifying them with a free X Y Z gift card or whatever, Widget. right? Yeah. I mean, that's surface and, and yeah. that's that's the price of entry these days. Yeah. And really taking that data back in aggregate, right? Because you can't do it anecdotally. Mm-hmm. Right? Aggregating it together, creating an analysis and determining where you're going to pivot your business based on how the public is reacting to your your content or your product. I mean what you're talking about it sounds like it answers the age-old question of how advertising, you don't know which, you know, 50% of advertising is good, the other 50% is bad, and you don't know which is which. And, and people thought that being able to track ads on the internet was the answer. But again, that's just the very surface layer. What you're talking about is all the deep stuff that actually truly answers that question in a way that humanity has never before been able to do. Absolutely. And you know, I've been in a room with uh, people both on the agency and the brand side mostly on the agency side when they go on with a pitch mm. and, and a lot of times the ad agency or the marketing agency's ideas go beyond just the, the, the transaction just beyond the ad mm. they talk about ways of doing things differently as a company and usually the brand manager just, just picks the prettiest ad and yeah. that's it and the ad people end up walking away feeling like are we really contributing to you know, improving the way business is done. See, I almost That's thought you were awesome. going to say it the other way around, where you're going to say the ad agency came along with just flashy ads, and and the brand manager wanted something deeper. But what you're saying well, is that, that happens it's too, yeah, but, which is probably the way it happened before. But clearly, these ad agencies have been listening to people like you and trying to add extra value. Because otherwise, what do you need an ad agency for, right? Yeah, well, right, right. Yeah. And you know, the ad agencies, marketing agencies, PR agencies, they're. Uh, some of the most insightful people because they're close to the data and they do the analysis and they've got the strategy. Um, you know, to be able to have somebody on board as a counselor, right, not just as a tactician or as an execution, or a, or a cheerleader, can counsel your business. You know, in, in the states, we've seen uh, a, a revolution in the way the head of communications is treated. That in some cases no longer uh, reports to the chief marketing officer, but instead reports directly to the chief executive officer, mm-hmm. providing strategic counsel, mm-hmm. right? We need more of that. It's almost like a, like a life coach, it's like a business coach. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So um, what are some examples of companies that you've helped and what was their journey in implementing your uh, strategies? And if you can't speak specifically about companies, then perhaps industries. Sure, um, you know, a, a really fascinating one that comes to mind is T-Mobile. Yep. Um, one of the big uh, telcos in the U.S. Big, big tel- it, it, it Un, was. What is it? Un, what's the Uncarrier? Isn't that the, their brand at the if, moment? <laughs> thank you. That's exactly. It's working, right? Yeah. Um, Even down here in Australia, I right? hear, hear about it. So yeah. here's the thing: they were the number four carrier. Yeah. You know, kind of the, the little brother of a totem pole. Yeah. Uh, and and the CEO, the U.S. CEO of T-Mobile, John Ledger. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've seen, where's the you, pink shirts, right? Yeah, absolutely, long hair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, pink Converse sneakers, That's it, yeah, yeah. right? Stands out like he's a sore thumb. deal. And he's on Twitter <laughs> yeah. as himself. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he's representing CMO, but he's also talking about things he loves to do, like um, marathon running and uh, slow cooker uh, yeah. Sundays. He's being truly authentic. He's being authentic, yeah. exactly. So yeah. when he comes along and he calls the CEOs of AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint, Larry Moe and Curly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know he's not kidding around. And it was That's his right. desire to take the T-Mobile brand and say, we are not like the other guys. Yeah. We are the uncarried. We're yeah. doing things differently. We're doing things that you, Mr. and Ms. Consumer, want us to do. Yeah. And that has just endeared him to people yeah. to the point where they are now in the number three position. They've overtaken Sprint 
and he's got the other two big ones right in his sights. Pretty soon right. he'll be like, Avis, we're number two, right? <laughs> exactly. Another one idea for, I mean, that was from the 70s, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, it's all cyclical. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just encouraging John to be himself, yeah. to interact with people, and, and to find ways to amplify that, you know, was transformative in how T-Mobile has really started to turn the corner. So, um, how advanced do you see Australian business at, at uh, doing customer service and personalization and advertising properly, and how far advanced or behind are we from the rest of the world? You know, I've, I've talked with a number of people while I've been down here to kind of get the, the, Lay the, the foot on the ground yeah. uh, approach. Yeah. Um, and they, at least they feel that uh, Australia is a little behind. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think that typically happens, you know, moving outside of North America. Yeah. To Europe, we see a bit of a lag. To Australia, there's a bit of a lag. Um, but here's the thing: I think Australia is in a great position to succeed. Why? Because you've got the benefit of all the mistakes mm -hmm. that the rest of us around the world are making. Yeah. Now, there's there's a caveat there as well. Mm -hmm. What happened in the United States is once social and digital got to a point, marketing swooped in with its budget and basically took everything over. Right, in a very marketing-centric way, which is exactly what my presentation was about. Um, and in the, uh, in the rush to uh, kind of repeat what we've done in the United States, Australia actually has an opportunity to avoid that mistake and take more of a comprehensive groupthink view, bring in customer service, bring in communications, certainly bring in marketing, but work together as a team on really how to serve the customer best, not just how to throw messages out and then throw your hands up and say, why aren't we getting any ROI? Mm -hmm. Not getting any ROI because it doesn't work like that. This is about building relationships over the long term and making the investments to make sure that happens. It's not a quick fix, it's foundational. Exactly. Yeah. So what are some examples of companies globally, whether it's the US, Europe, Australia, or that are really doing this well, whether they're your clients or not? I think one of the and, and we mentioned, of course, um, T-Mobile as yeah. a great example. That they are they're a great example of a, of a, a CEO-led uh, resurgence, mm -hmm. uh, who is again authentic and very consistent with the brand. Yeah. Okay. Um, bigger than that, though, uh, and, and this is on the B two B side, mm -hmm. which is really where it gets interesting and it shows it can be done with B two B. General Electric, good or GE. Yeah. Right. Uh, making airplane engines and locomotives and all the things that wind make turbines them. absolutely um, they are killing it in the digital and social space why because they're experimenting they are and, and they are a company that's been built on imagination and innovation for a hundred years over a hundred years yeah. you know Thomas Edison started the company hmm. and they're doing things like the six second science fair on Vine where they've got these six second videos to show you these little things you can do now does that help GE's brand image at, you know, when a major purchase is going No, but it helps to create awareness. It, can, it helps with their reputation. It helps people keep GE in mind. See, this company is still with it a yeah. hundred years on. Yeah. They still get it. That's for somebody like me. Any other examples you want to uh, call out? I think um, that, you know, they've been doing well for years and they continue to do well. Uh, and that is Coca-Cola. Yeah. You know, which, you know, However, you consider their business model based on selling sugar water yep. to the masses, um, they are all about happiness. What, what more universal human condition could you find <laughs> than happiness? Right. right. That's right. Uh, well, maybe misery, but no one wants to market on misery, <laughs> right? Um, so they are doing a marvelous job with corporate storytelling. They changed their whole corporate website into a story-based site called Coca-Cola Journeys. Mm -hmm. And you can go there and find any number of vertical uh, uh, themes on, again, the human condition, happiness, and what Coke is like all around the world. Now, in one of your uh, quotes, you talk about virtual reality and autonomous vehicles. We're on the cusp of technologies that will allow us to do things you know, that have been you know, science fiction going to science fact. Yeah. So the question here is, you know, what will this industry look like over the next five years, by the end of the decade, in a decade? Will the minority report uh, world of uh, you know, personalized uh, cereal boxes and then personalized ads. I mean, we already see some of that stuff. There already are these banner, these uh, ads on the side of the road 
you know, that, that can look at you and see if you're a young person or not and, and give you a personalized ad. So, right. I mean, some of that stuff's already happening, but where do you see it in a, in a decade or by the end of the decade? Well, if I could predict it accurately, you'd I would be a multi be a venture capitalist, that's it, that's it. Not, not a consultant. Um, but what I can tell you is this. I the think trends, yeah. There will always be, um, there, there'll be two competing factors. One is the human need for what's in it for me, mm -hmm. you know, the personalization aspect. But competing with that at the same time, is the very human need for privacy. Absolutely. Right? Now we've seen Mark Zuckerberg come along and try to completely destroy any notion of privacy. Disrupt it, yeah, yeah. Um, we're fighting back. Making the world a more open place. Mm. You know, it's, it's not an evil thing, no. just he wants to create Well, we, we, I mean, when I say we're trying to fight back because we don't, we don't want to be the generation that let privacy slip through our fingers. Well, exactly. And we, but we still want the benefits of, of a world where we can share this data freely. And, and that's the thing, you know, how do you actually how do you get away with sharing? Mm -hmm. How do you get away with that personalized content without giving up too much of your data? Yeah. You know, we already give up so much and we don't realize We want it. the best of all worlds. Right, right. And and the stuff that we saw in Minority Report and AI, mm. I mean, boy, that's that's already here. Yeah. Right? So uh, I just hope that we keep uh, Isaac Asimov's Three Laws of Robotics in mind. Yeah, I read all his books and I love them. So cool. His four, actually, there was four laws because one of the robots came up with a zero. With a little bit. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. And um, yes, and you know, I mean, of course, also you've got the issue where the three laws of robotics can lead to the situation where robots feel. There's a famous book called With Folded Hands. Mm. And um, I mean, I don't want to ruin it for people, but you know, effectively in the book, you know, that someone developed robots and they gave them instructions to look after humans. And they looked after them so well that in the end, that all the robot would let you do was sit there with folded hands because everything was too dangerous. Cooking, sewing, cleaning, jumping, yeah, yeah. you know, breathing just about. And so we, you know, the three laws of robotics need to be modified so right. they, they don't protect us too much. Exactly. You know, because exactly. otherwise that, that yeah. stifles human ingenuity and, and the risk taking that uh, is humanity. Yeah. So a couple of last questions. I always like to ask the people I'm interviewing if they could please share some excellent advice or the best advice you've ever received to help you get where you are today. Well, I can think of, of one piece of verbal and non-verbal advice that I got from the same manager mm -hmm. early on. Um, the first thing that he said to me was, um, you, need to, you need to think of yourself in terms of, I have arrived. Yeah. Right? Don't keep waiting for something to happen. Don't keep thinking, well, someday if. He said, tell yourself, I have arrived, and treat yourself accordingly. Right? That builds confidence, and it builds confidence of other people in you. The second thing I learned, just by observing him, this was the CEO of a, of, of a consulting firm. We would have these all hands meetings and um, everyone would go around and give their opinion on a certain issue, whatever it was. And, and Andy would sit there and wouldn't say a thing and he would wait for everyone else to speak and then he would speak last. And that, that afforded him two things. One, all ears and eyes were on Andy at that point because I wanted to see what the boss was going to say. Yeah. And two, I had the chance to take in what everyone else said and observe and kind of form his opinions before just blurting something out. So it made him seem more like a, a sage and, and, a, and a wise counsel than anyone else. And, you know, he was genuinely listening. He was authentic. Absolutely. So do you have any final messages to share with ITY viewers and readers and for your current and future customers? Well, I think there's great hope for the future. Mm -hmm. That's the good news. Yeah. Um, you know, and put your device down every now and then after this video. Yeah. Right? Please. Um, yeah. <laughs> hug your children. Uh, take people out to coffee. Do the face-to-face -face thing. Um, write a letter, an actual physical letter with a real pen in your hand. Um, those kinds of human interactions aren't going away. I think we need to embrace them now more than ever. There's a, a company in Australia called the Coffee Club. A bit like Starbucks. And uh, their advertising campaign says, you know, that the cup of coffee was the original handheld device that you used to catch up with your friends. See, and it, I would love it. Blends in I perfectly it. with what you were just saying. Scott Monty, thank you very much for your time today. I hope to see you at future secrets and best of luck with the future. Thanks so much, Alex. Thank you.